Encanto songs tier list based on a lot of factors, one of them being how magical they are. I'm each of the stage vocal coach and musician and let's rank these songs together. Starting with the family Madrigal. Now this is a perfect opening song, you know, we're getting introduced to everybody. We're not only introduced to the characters, but we're also introduced to their powers. We also mentioned Bruno at a very short period in that song, which is kind of like good foreshadowing. Now one thing that I find very interesting is that Disney is well aware of everybody's uh, attention span. Almost any person nowadays has a very short attention span. We even know that by TikTok because all of these video formats are getting shorter and shorter, except this one. <laughs> they didn't want to waste our time introducing everybody slowly because first of all, it would take a lot of time for us to connect with the characters and it will take a lot of time of the movie, which we don't even know if we enjoy it yet. So they put it all in one catchy song, very upbeat, very fast song. And we're finally introduced to the first, let's say, plot twist of the movie, which is that mirror bell doesn't have any power so i really enjoyed the song it's catchy it's upbeat and you can dance to it but i don't think that it deserves the number one spot so i'm putting it in the a tier next song that we have is all of you and if you don't remember that's the song that they're singing when they're trying to repair casita near the ending of the whole movie now one thing that i have a problem let's say with this song is that it's competing with other amazing songs in encanto so i don't think it's too memorable now this is one of the songs that i wouldn't really listen to on its own you know i understand its purpose in the movie but as a standalone song i don't think it's doing too much so i'm going to put it in the d tier next song is different from all of the rest it's called dos Sorugitas, and it translates to two caterpillars now i love this song because it's written in a very nostalgic kind of way if you were just to listen to this song you might think that it's a song from let's say i don't know 20 30 years before but that's what they were aiming to to do with this song this song is playing in abuela's flashback sequence as she remembers her boyfriend later the father of her three children actually i believe the two of them are grandparents to mirabel what makes this song so touching is the way that it goes so well with the animation the way it displays their whole life together abuela and her husband the way they fall in love the way she announced her pregnancy to him uh saying that she's carrying triplets and just a lot of beautiful details but not only that this is the part where we finally find out that her husband sacrificed himself to the conquerors to save his family and i believe i strongly believe that he is actually in the candle now that's something to think about he may be the real miracle that's helping his family even after that you know now all of that being said i really love the acoustic instruments in this song it's basically just written on a guitar it reminds me of songs like let's say remember me from coco it's just a very sad minimal song it's something like i feel somebody would just grab a guitar and write and i feel that often those songs are the best songs ever now again this musical movie has some amazing songs so it's very hard to pick a spot for this one i guess i'm going to put it in the b tier although i'm not really sure why i feel like it could be even more up but we're just getting started so i'm going to put it in the b tier for now next song on the list is surface pressure and i believe that this song is really underrated i mean it's a killer song jessica darrow is just killing it and i would separate this song in two distinctive parts. First part is where Jessica Darrow, or the character of Luisa, is telling us how she's strong, how she can basically handle everything, but at the same time, she's feeling the pressure, she's uh, thinking that she might not live to the expectations, which we find out later that is a big problem in this family. Now, there's one sentence in this whole song that I believe the song would be meaningless if it was left out. And this is the sentence. I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can be of service. I believe that all of us felt at least once in our life like that. And I think that this song is relatable so much because of that. Now, as I already said, I would split the song in two parts, not only because of the lyrics, but also because of the way she's singing. First part, she's singing more staccato, meaning more choppier. So she's not blending the words perfectly. And that kind of resembles this raw energy, this power. It, it kind of sounds like a soldier singing. But later in the part where she finally transitions into the sky, like levitating, there she's singing legato and she's adding these short runs kind of jazzy thing and that just sounds like so relaxing like she's finally letting go and i love the contrast Ooh, i just remember one more thing the first part is more pop produced 
you know, staccato, and it sounds more pop. It even has a bit of autotune, just to have that really polished pop sound, like you, like the songs you hear on the radio. But the later part is very more uh, real sounding, like raw sounding, you know, vulnerable. I feel like even in the mixing of the song, those two parts were done a bit differently on purpose. I think when they were doing this song, they really put a lot of thought into every single detail. And not only that, this is one of the rarest alto songs in Disney. Now, Disney usually writes these high, belty, power vocal, you know, songs like Frozen, you know, Elsa, stuff like that. But this is actually a deep and refreshing view of characters, but also singing. So not everybody has to belt, not everybody has to slay these high notes. Jessica Darrow is just showing that deep notes can be just as powerful. And if done right, blending staccato, legato, and all of that fun stuff while expressing the storyline, that just shows that songs like this can be brutally good. So that's why I'm putting this song in the S tier. Next song on the list is Waiting on a Miracle. And I connect this song to Mulan's reflection, at least the beginning of the song. This is the first, let's say, more serious song of the movie. And it's a song where Mirabelle confesses her feelings that she feels like she's not a part of the family anymore. Although she kind of struggles with herself, trying to explain it to herself that she feels like she is a part, but she's finally sharing with us, the audience, that she's not okay that she's not okay, that she didn't have a gift, that she didn't have her own power. And not only that, she feels completely left out of the family. And she is ready. She's ready to um, get her gift. She's ready to help everybody. She's definitely the most selfless character ever, but it just doesn't work. For some reason, she's not having a gift. And I don't know, this song is very confessional and in the terms of Disney confession songs and kind of realizing who you are and what your goal is, what you should do, I feel it's very strong. It's not the strongest, don't get me wrong. I still feel like Mulan Reflections is one of the top songs of all time when it comes to Disney, but this song is pretty, pretty huge. And maybe some of you don't agree and that's all fine. Maybe some of you have a different opinion. I would like to hear it in the comment section. I would actually like to hear your thoughts about the whole tier list. Maybe you can tell me yours, but I'm putting this song in the A tier. I really think it's powerful. I think it serves the purpose of the whole movie. Without this song, this movie just wouldn't make too much sense. Trust me. And that's why it deserves the A spot in my opinion. The next song is What Else Can I Do? It's Isabella's song. If you don't remember Isabella, she's the perfect one. And I'm actually saying perfect on purpose because in this song, she finally realized that she's not perfect and that she actually enjoys not being perfect, which is kind of beautiful in its own way. I think that she's the definition if you're trying always to be perfect, that you're just going to burn out. So sometimes the imperfections are the most beautiful thing about us. And I think that that's what makes us humans. And that's what makes us unique. And I really enjoy that. Now, one thing that I have to say about the song, if I was just listening to the song alone, you know, the musicality, the vocal performance, I find it very beautiful. But Mirabelle's part at the beginning when she's saying, bring it in, bring it in, like she wants to hug Isabella, that's actually throwing me off a bit. To me, that part changes the tone of the whole song, which doesn't make too much sense if it's not in the movie. If you're just listening to the song alone. But what I love about this song is that this is the first song in the whole movie that introduces us to the electric guitar. If you really listen to the song, we have electric guitar, we even have a sort of a solo in the background, which kind of, to me, describes her evolution as a character. So she's not perfect anymore, and rock is kind of, let's say, more filthier kind of music, and that describes her. She was always this flower girl, but now she's kind of more, well, I don't know, I wouldn't say gods. <laughs> she's definitely not as polished version of herself as she used to be, and that's what I find very beautiful. But all of that being said, and with that Mirabelle's beginning, I would put this song in the B tier. I just think when I compare it to other songs of the movie, this is the tier that it fits best. Now, I'm making this tier list on a website called Tier Maker, and this is the song that Dave suggested. But there's actually one more song that has, you know, singing in it. There are actually more instrumentals in the whole movie, but it would take quite a lot to talk about every single instrumental because I think 
all in total there are about 30 songs not quite sure but there are definitely eight songs with singing so they missed one and that song is Colombia Mi Encanta now I enjoy the lyrics of the song because they're kind of festive and very positive and they're talking about these Colombia customs you know family customs I especially enjoy the chorus of the song which goes something like this Colombia te adore tanto tu nombre tiene un Encanto, which would translate to Colombia, I adore you so much, there's a charm to your very name. And Encanto would mean charm. And I just like how they use the title of the movie inside the song. Now, all of that being said, this song is competing with some serious bangers in the whole movie so i would probably put this song in the c tier i'm not completely sure about that but so far the c tier is kind of left empty and i would kind of put it in there finally the last song is we don't talk about bruno now this song is amazing this song just has everything it kind of has that rumba bossa nova quality it's immediately a song to dance to but it has a lot and i mean a lot of foreshadowing every single character is saying something about Bruno that either happened or will happen. For example, I love when Dolores is saying that he reminds her of the sound of falling sand and that she hears him mumbling, you know, behind the doors. She's basically saying that she's been hearing him all this time. And even the sand, you know, when Mirabel came into his room, it was full of sand. Also later, she's singing about how Bruno predicted that the love of her life would be just out of reach. And that's actually the prince or the guy that was kind of a... Uh, meant for Isabella. Later on, we figure out that he's actually better off with Dolores and stuff like that. But all of that little foreshadowing is just so beautiful. Another foreshadowing is when Isabella is singing that her powers will grow. That's basically the whole what else can I do song, you know. So just these small perfect details and one detail that you may have missed that I find really funny and interesting. I'm actually going to show it to you here. Here's a funny little, let's say, Easter egg. If you focus on the center of this part, you can see Bruno dancing actually in the background. <laughs> I've never figured that out while watching the movie first time but after I've re-listened to these songs millions of times I just figured out a couple of details more and this whole movie is filled with awesome little details I think there are probably even more for example Hercules sentence in surface pressure and the Titanic scene you know just a lot of cool details this movie is just excellent and this song is so good. Now, the best part of the whole song is the ending, when everybody's singing at the same time. Now, this actually not only is cool, but it's actually a musical term for this, and you might guess what it's called. It's actually called Madrigal. This is how I would explain it. Madrigal was a type of a cappella song, most popular in Baroque and Renaissance. It's usually an a cappella song from at least two voices to up to about eight voices, and it's a polyphonic song, meaning that every voice is equally important. So the melody of every voice individually is just as important as the melody of the other voices, meaning that they all kind of intertwine and make this musical family. So there's no doubt in my mind that they picked this term Madrigal especially for this movie because all of them intertwine and they make this family that without each other it just wouldn't work. And that's so good. That's so good. I can't believe that's so good. And I'm putting this song of course in the S tier. And I just want to say thank you for watching. And if you want to check out the full Encanto movie with me, there's a watch long version on my Patreon page where you can synchronize my footage with the movie so we can watch it together, basically. That way you also support the channel and that means the world to me. Other ways of supporting is by subscribing, liking this video, commenting, and of course sharing the video everywhere because that really helps out the most. And what can I say? You look wonderful and I really do hope to see you in the next video. Bye.